Hello, this is Dr. Marty Harris. Our topic is multiple and severe disabilities, and today we will cover foundational information. Let us begin with a quote from Dr. Deborah Smith. Quote, Individuals with severe low incidence disabilities were those most often excluded from public schools before the original passage of IDEA in 1975. These individuals' disabilities present major challenges to themselves, their families, the schools, and society. However, we now know from the evidence of their participation in schools and in the community that education makes a real difference in their results and lifts our expectations for what they can and do achieve." End quote. I certainly agree with Dr. Smith and I hope by the end of this module you too will agree with her. Perhaps two phenomena have clouded our understanding of individuals with severe disabilities. One could be our fear that such a significant disability could happen to us. Two could be the severity of the disability masks our view of the possibilities of what potential is hidden behind the disability. Our agenda includes definitions, prevalence, etiology, and issues and trends. This slide presents IDEA's definition of multiple disabilities. It is found within the regulations of 2004 IDEA. Concomitant impairments such as mental retardation and blindness, mental retardation and orthopedic impairment, etc. The combination of which causes such severe educational problems that they cannot be accommodated in special education programs solely for one of the impairments. Having more than one disability presents unique challenges to the individual and the family. No one definition can cover all the possible combinations of severe disabilities. The interaction of the concomitant impairments that cause significant complexities for the student's learning, behavior, and daily functioning. These complexities can only be effectively addressed using a very individualized approach to the functional assessment and to the approach to interventions. This slide presents the legal definition of severe disabilities. It is also found in IDEA's 2004 regulations. The term refers to children with disabilities who because of the intensity of their physical, mental, or emotional problems need highly specialized education, social, psychological, and medical services in order to maximize their full potential. Although IDEA does define severe disabilities as part of its legal terms, severe disability is not a federal disability category. On the other hand, multiple disabilities is a federal disability category. Developmental disabilities is a term often used by states. Neither IDEA 2004 nor its regulations use the term developmental disabilities. The term developmental disabilities is often used interchangeably with the term multiple severe disabilities. Two important advocacy organizations, TASH is the Association for Persons with Severe Handicaps. AAIDD is the American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. It was the AAMR, American Association on Mental Retardation. 
Both TASH and AAIDD advocate for a system of classification which focuses on the level of support needed to improve the quality of life and enhance life activities. Here you see TASH's definition includes individuals of all ages who require extensive ongoing support in more than one major life activity in order to participate in integrated community settings and to enjoy a quality of life that is available to citizens with fewer or no disabilities. Support may be required for life activities such as mobility, communication, self-care, and learning as necessary for independent living, employment, and self-sufficiency. TASH really focuses on quality of life and the support of life activities. Classification. Classification can be based on AAIDD levels of support system. Most students with multiple severe disabilities will need extensive or pervasive supports. The levels of support include intermittent, time limited, extensive, and pervasive. Intermittent refers to needing support for some activities. Time limited refers to needing support during certain periods of time during life. Extensive refers to intensive support in one or more environments. Pervasive refers to intensive assistance in more than one setting on an ongoing basis. Please refer to your book for more specific examples of these four levels of support. Prevalence of multiple and severe disabilities is not easily determined. A very small percentage of students out of the 6 million students with disabilities ages 6 to 21 have multiple severe disabilities. The prevalence is 2.2 percent of the students who do receive special education services ages 6 to 21. In 2005, out of the whole school population, less than 0.22% have multiple and severe disabilities. This is about one student in 500. Note that this figure does not include infants, toddlers, and preschoolers that have multiple and severe disabilities. It is difficult to be accurate because states may report differently. Some states may include certain disability combinations such as cognitive impairment and hearing impairment or learning disabilities and vision impairment. Other states do not. Some states may assign these students to their state category developmental delay. Etiology as to identifying causes, 30 to 40 percent have no identifiable cause. Other causes that we do know include both genetic and environmental factors, prenatal biomedical factors, and disorders of brain formation. The issues and trends found in the field of multiple and severe disabilities are also found across all the low incidence disabilities. The courts continue to define what constitutes appropriate related services. Inclusion decisions are complex, but as long as we continue to focus on benefit to the individual and remember the I in IEP stands for individualized we can make decisions that bring out positive outcomes. Issues and Trends Providing appropriate related services becomes more complex for these students 
in that it often includes medical care. Courts, including the Supreme Court, reaffirmed that schools can and should provide medical procedures in the schools. These rulings establish the precedence that if a procedure does not require a physician and can be done by a nurse or trained personnel, it is the school's responsibility to provide such care. Parents, families, and professionals, as well as the individual with disability, need to be advanced planners when it comes to long-term care, insurance, and medical needs. Technology will continue to change and we need to continue to evaluate how assistive technology can be used to enhance the lives of individuals with multiple and severe disabilities. Hopefully, more funding for research as well as implementation of AT services will come about. One of the most controversial issues concerning multiple and severe disabilities is the use of medical advances to change specific human biological function to facilitate easier care. For example, what if parents elect to have their child receive operations to eliminate reproductive function and to change the growth pattern so that the child will not continue to grow? Such is the case of the Pillow Angel, a young woman with severe disability who has extremely low cognitive function and is non-ambulatory. Go online and see what you can find about the case of the Pillow Angel. Appropriate treatment and respectful interactions must be encouraged and taught. That's a teacher's job. We need to open our hearts and our minds to the possibilities for these students. See them as individuals first see the disabilities second, and remember, education should be special for all students. Thanks for listening.